From the very beginning, rings have moved in the best of circles, and in noses as well. Ears have stuck out for the same treatment, and ankles have kept in step with the times. And who would dispute that arms like these were made for encircling? But finger rings have always held pride of place, and sometimes a very large place, as these oriental specimens show. From earliest times, the ring has identified the wearer by a seal or signet, like the famous Percy signet. The old papal rings were worn over a glove. They are part of the Franks collection, shown by courtesy of the British Museum. Bishops of the seventh century wore several, including one on the thumb. Deckered rings were so-called because of the ten knobs on them, each one representing a prayer. Cramp rings were blessed by the kings of England after Edward the Confessor's reign as preventatives against cramp and falling sickness. Gimel rings from the French Jumel, a twin, were so named because they were formed of two almost identical parts. One part was worn by the lover and the other by the beloved. A fade ring formed by two clasped hands signifying plighted troth. Another fade ring was in the form of a puzzle which could be made into five rings. A magical ring, engraved with the five wounds of the Christus, worn as a protection against disease, another in the form of a pentagon. Jewish betrothal rings were most elaborate affairs. They usually represented either the Temple of Jerusalem or the Ark of the Covenant. Rings of horn or stone were used in the East for releasing the bowstring. They were worn on the thumb of the right hand. Memorial rings were worn to commemorate persons or events and this one helped to keep green the memory of Charles I. Sometimes a portrait was carried inside. Mourning rings were very popular in early Victorian days. A band round the arm later took the place of a band round the finger. Classical scenes, reproductions of favourite pictures and legendary figures, provided motifs for other rings of great size and substance. These massive rings are of West African origin and were worn mainly by the aristocrats of Ashanti. An almost priceless relic is this signet ring of Mary Queen of Scots, which she is reputed to have worn on the scaffold. The girl who wore this had time on her hands, for the tiny setting is a watch. Another ingenious finger band is a sundial, which can be opened or closed. A less happy chord is struck by this poison ring, which when opened revealed a cavity for secreting poison. True, the ring sometimes contained perfume, but, uh, well, let's finish on a dramatic note. That there's poison. <laughs>